We're honored today to feature Ms. Renee Taran, Fortnet, Deputy Chief Information Security Officer, and Mr. Kevin Kerr, the Chief Information Security Officer and IT Risk Officer at the Oak Ridge National So Lab. Renee, I'm going to I'm going to start bragging again. Over 20 years experience in cybersecurity, information security, technology fields, engineering, ops, strategy, policy. Renee does it all. Focuses on enterprise security in her current role. Renee, you served in the national security agent in various positions. You were the special assistant to the director of national security agency for cyber and the director of the NSA cyber task force in which you advanced NSA's execution, not only of cybersecurity and cyber related missions, but you oversaw tons of the resources and those that helped support that mission, as well as shaping a lot of the strategy that came out of our white house, Kevin Kerr. My colleague and friend, Chief Information Security Officer and IT Officer at the Oak Ridge National Lab, 37 years of experience across, again, cyber, cyber physical, information assurance and, and governance. He's been somebody who in that lab understands the role that research and development has upon the impact or impacts our technology roadmaps for our country across all critical infrastructure sectors. He's super collaborative. He represents what open government is all about in terms of just helping establish partnerships, but fostering those, those, those relationships that are so important with government and industry. He's a true leader in every sense of the word. He's worked with senior federal and board leaders to enable missions while focusing on security and resilience. Uh, word. Kevin retired from the Air Force and Air National Guard as a Lieutenant Colonel, where he was a commander of Cyber Warfare Squadron. Kevin, of course, thank you for your service to our great nation. Fortnite's um, you know, founded in 2000, based in Sunnyvale, California. We're a leading cybersecurity company. Um, you know, we're traditionally known for their firewalls. Um, that's how Fortnite started. Uh, but I will tell you, we've expanded so much more beyond firewalls. Um, we have one of the broadest portfolios of end-to-end -end security solutions. We have what we call a security fabric, and that's kind of what ties our, our technologies together. But it has an open API system, so we work and play well with others. So we integrate with other technologies beyond um, just the Fortnite technologies. Oak Ridge is one of the, the national labs here within the Department of Energy, and we range in research of just about everything from A to Z. We have the fastest supercomputer. You know, we do other things too. We have the spalatial neutron source. We have the high flux isotope reactor, and these are one of a kind systems. And we got to make sure that this, you know, these systems are secure, but open for research. So that's my biggest challenge as a CISO is allowing open collaboration with everybody in the world, just about and but protecting the information at the same time. How is the roadmap at Fortinet evolving? Is it in constant state of evolution? We were founded by engineers, not marketers. We bring our, our customers in to have those strategic dialogues, you know, so that they understand, you know, so we understand, okay, where are you going from a strategic standpoint? What, what is your roadmap for the next, you know, 12, 18, 36 months? And then understanding, you know, here's where our vision roadmap from a technology standpoint is. Um, it's no longer, you know, a situation where here's a solution, you know, good luck with it. You know, it's got to be that, that iterative feedback and, you know, partnership and collaboration throughout the entire process. And those customer advisory boards, I get to see where they're going. And I'm saying, well, you're thinking about this. You're thinking about that. We drive things. You know, the government drives things. Yeah, we're the biggest out there. And if you can make it in the government, you're going to be able to go into industry and other places. And if you're able to get into the government, you're showing other industries that you're meeting the, some of the most stringent and sometimes, re, you know, regulatory requirements out there. Fortnite was a founding starter of the Cyber Threat Alliance. And it's, you know, it's a community of, you know, technology company, companies, uh, members that where they all get together and, you know, we share that timely, actionable um, intelligence. Um, to not only help improve, you know, our products and services to help protect our customers, but also, you know, really kind of, you know, take a stand against, you know, the adversaries and, you know, work together to improve the overall security of, of the, the digital ecosystem. Part of that, you know, what I call the, the early sharing slash early warning system um, to for, you know, the overall good of, um, you know, our customers and, you know, the nation. That's one of the nice things of being one of a bunch of national labs is, Another national lab may be looking at something, and I'm in partnership with the CISO at Lawrence Livermore or Brookhaven or Argonne. I mean, we're in partnership, and they're looking at things, too, and we talk among us, okay? And they're saying, hey, we're looking at X, or we're looking at Y, and I'm like, oh, I looked at that, you know, a couple of months ago, and here's some things we saw, and we share things. So there's that constant collaboration um, between all the CISOs, but it's also I talk to industry CISOs. 
and they're saying, hey, we're looking at this, we're looking at that. I'm like, ooh, how did that help you? What did it do? I know a little bit about them. And that's where I, I get the best value, the biggest bang for the buck with vendors that say, you know, hey, we're doing this. Or here's someone that works great with us that can integrate and help you and bring you to the next level. I don't think there is any silver bullet when it comes to doing security. And I think of what Kevin says, it's a layer defense. I think if there was a silver bullet, Fortnite would have created it by now. Um, it just doesn't exist. So you do need to do that defense in depth. And I'll add on an additional thing to that is also having that security awareness training. When you look at the ransomware attacks, over 50% of them start by social engineering attacks. So it's really also important that we don't forget the, the people aspect um, you know, beyond just the, the technology, it takes people, processes, and technology. Um, you can have some of the best technologies in, in the world, um, but they can be circumvented by, you know, human error or not properly implemented or configured properly. So also having that security awareness training is key. When I talk to people, I say our biggest threat is our user. Mm. And I'm not being mean or, you know, anything like that, but our biggest asset and protection is also our user goes back to the defense in depth. Yes, I've got a firewall on my perimeter. I've got, you know, firewalls inside. I've got endpoint detection, but I still have a person with a mouse that's going to go click and game over. What are the technologies of the future that you're most excited about? Or uh, you're... The AI and machine learning um, mm -hmm. to help drive, you know, the, the security protection defenses and, and response. Um, because I think the adversaries is is leveraging those technologies against us. And I think we need to be, you know, leveraging them in our arsenal, um, you know, to kind of fight fire with fire. It's the most important thing is our information. I want to I want to get to that. And that's what I want vendors to start working on and going toward is how do I protect information, you know, at the point of creation and associated with, you know, a person or a capability at that point. You know, that's key. Renee, what's the most challenging aspect of your job? I've always told my teams that, you know, our, our job is, yes, we, we live and breathe security um, and security is critical to the mission. But at the end of the day, um, our job is to be seen as a strategic partner. You, you understand their requirements because ultimately, you know, we're, we're there to help them do their job safely and securely. So it's really making sure that you don't get too far down in the weeds and, you know, the technical side of things um, without having your, your, your mind on, you know, where are we trying to go as a company, as an organization from a strategic perspective? and making sure that the technology and the security strategies align with those business objectives. You know, cybersecurity has always been looked at as no. I don't want to be the no and innovative. I want cybersecurity to be the partner that's going to enable you to do things right. And the, the best way for you to ensure your work is your work and it's not messed with. You know, a lot has changed, you know, in the operating environment, um, you know, especially over the last year. Um, and so obviously as the attack surface grows, you know, you need to make sure that you're really looking at those risk uh, mitigations to really address, you know, this new operating paradigm. Um, and again, like I said, it takes people, processes, and technologies. The adversaries aren't slowing down. Uh, if anything, they've, you know, accelerated um, over the last year. You should be looking at solutions that provide you that broad visibility across the entire attack surface, um, integrated, they work and play well with others and that they're automated. Um, from my perspective, that's really gonna be the key for meeting the challenges of today and tomorrow.